in the, our very first lesson on MM1, uh, and we were looking at all the units, we said you could measure lengths, which were one dimensional. You could measure areas, which are um, two dimensional. And then you can measure volumes, right? So how would you finish this sentence? The volume of a solid is, how would you define that to someone who's never heard the word volume before? Yeah, we reckon it's capacity. Whoa. Now, capacity is a really important idea. However, and sorry, I should say, they are very, very closely linked, right? Capacity is how much stuff you can fit inside something, okay? Volume is a little, it's a little bit different. It's like the difference between saying, oh, okay, um, what are the dimensions of this box versus how much water can I pour in it? So we're going to look at capacity next week, and they are very close related, but slightly different. Slightly different. Anyone want to have another go? Yeah. Um, maybe like how much space is inside. Yeah. Okay. So capacity is about how much stuff is in something, whereas the volume of a solid is the amount of space it takes up. And the important thing is length, one dimensional, area, two dimensional, but volume is three dimensional. Okay? Which is why we have um, like centimeters and meters for length, we have square centimeters and square meters for area, and then we have cubic meters and cubic centimeters for volume. Okay? Now, uh, it's kind of cool because it's not that complicated to work out if you have. A solid shape like this okay now these are kinds of the main ones we're going to focus on because you can see um, it's kind of the same all the way along right so if I were to slice this up into pieces it'd be triangles a whole bunch of triangles right so being that I can cut it up all the way and get the same shape over and over again we call this little subheading we call this a prism Prism actually comes from, I think it's Latin, or Greek, Latin, I think. Um, it comes from the word for, that means cutting or sawing, right? So it's like, I can cut or saw this shape into many, many pieces and get the same thing over and over again, right? So a prism is a solid with, the way I would say it is, a consistent cross section. If you cut it again and again and again, you'll get the same shape repeatedly, right? So a solid with consistent Cross. Can you draw this shape for me? Um, I was a bit limited uh, in doing this. I did really mean this to be a triangle rather than like this steppy thing. But if we draw one of these things, right? Um, and if you have, if you don't have a ruler or a straight edge, I'll let you come and grab one. Well, let's draw one together. And to help you make it feel like a prism, right? Having these dotted lines is helpful because we're using a 2D space. In, in other words, my whiteboard and your piece of paper. We're using a 2D space to represent a 3D object. So everything you can do, like shading, extra lines that you can't really see, to help you feel like, yes, this is a 3D object, the more you've got to verse about. Okay? Now, if you have another color there, it'll be really useful because what I want to highlight for you is this consistent cross-section idea, right? So if I were to cut this, say in here, so just um, eyes up for a second and watch where I'm placing this, you can see the beginning is a triangle and the end is a triangle and everywhere in between, like here for instance, all of those are also triangles, okay? So we name prisms based on what their cross-section is, right? So this is, well, what would you call this? A triangular prism. You can have a square prism, you can have a rectangular prism. So long as you've got straight edges everywhere and you can cut it across and get this consistent cross section, it's a prism. Okay. Now, how do you go ahead working out the volume of this thing, right? All it means is how much space does it take? How much space does it take? So I want to take advantage of this cross section idea. Okay? If what I do is cut this up many, many times, so that I've got all of the different pieces, right? You can see every time I break this apart, I'm going to get that same triangle over and over again. So I just need to know how many of those triangles I've got. 
So let's actually um, let's actually use this. We'll borrow the measurements of this thing, right? You can see what are the um, if you treat one cube as a unit, right? How tall and how wide, or what are the base of my height of my triangle? Three and three. three. It's three and three, right? So let's just say uh, three over here and three over here. Okay. You might like to put some arrows here to indicate what's going on. So. I can work out every single one of these, and I'm going to break this apart in a second. Every single one of these triangles has the same um, three by three dimension, okay? Um, and there's a, for me, conveniently, there's a right angle there, so we'll use that in a minute. How many of these triangles do I have? What is the, the distance all the way across the, um, the triangles? Four. It's four, right? So I'm going to put my four over here. Now, this is a little bit weird, right? We're going to work out the area of each one of these triangles, and so we call this A, the cross-sectional area. We call it A. That makes sense. We'll calculate it in a second. But this other distance, right, this 4, what might we call it? Now, depending on the way you hold it, you will call it different things. So, for example, if I hold it like this, so that the... Um, this four length is facing from me to you, right? Or from you to me. You'd probably call it something like depth, maybe. It's like, how deep does it go in, okay? However, a convention is that we try and think of the object upright, like this, okay? So we call this thing, just like in a triangle, you don't have to draw this, but just like in a triangle, you see how this is not just the height, it's the perpendicular height. So what I want is the height that's perpendicular to my cross section. So I'm going to think of it as vertical like this and call this perpendicular height. So since it's height, I'll just use the letter H. Okay? Now that's a bit weird because it's like, you know, if I look at it like this, it doesn't seem normal to call that distance, which is horizontal, to call that height. Right? Um, you wouldn't call the width between my, my shoulders, right? You wouldn't call that my height. But height in shapes like this, it's kind of a more malleable idea. Um, I can turn this shape around and measure it in different ways, as opposed to me, which you can't turn around. Well, you probably could because I'm not that heavy. But anyway, you get the idea that this is what we're going to call H. Okay, so um, can we work out what the area is? In fact, uh, could you use this as something to help you? Um, what's the area of a triangle? It's half base times height, right? Now, just using these measurements, Base times height is 9, it's 9, and so half of base times height is 4.5, I only know 4.5, okay? Now, um, let's just imagine, I, I had to use this as my model, right? But let's imagine that the units are in centimetres, okay? So this length is centimetres, centimetres, and centimetres. So what units are the cross-sectional area in? What is the cross-sectional area? Very good, square centimeters. Okay, um, I've already we've already described what our perpendicular height here is. Okay, so therefore, I just need a tiny bit more space. The volume, which again we're going to abbreviate just with a single letter, V seems to be a good choice. The volume is going to be the cross-sectional area times the perpendicular height. It's like, look, you just get a whole bunch of these. Just tell me how many of them there are. And the answer is four of them. So I'm going to say A H four times four and a half. Hmm. Four times four and a half. I think that's 18. Yeah, 18. Now, remember I pointed out to you what these units were in, right? It's important you always have units because we're measuring stuff. Centimeters squared, centimeters, you put them together, Centimeters cubed. This is just like index laws, isn't it? Like if you had two squared times two, you'd have two cubed, right? And you've got centimeters squared times centimeters. So you're getting centimeters cubed. It's not a coincidence.